Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are good when I tell you. Oh my gosh, this has been a crazy evening. So I took a nap, you know what I'm saying, so that way I can get up early so I can start preparing the food for Thanksgiving. You know, we're dealing with COVID and all that other bullshit, so we can't have a lot of family over, but me and the boys, we're still going to cook. So so I took a nap so that way I could get up and, you know, start doing my share. You know what I mean? Start working on these greens, the cabbage, and all that stuff. And so people woke me up like, you need to get up. Kelsey don't drop the diss track. Kelsey going in on Meg. I'm like, what in the world? This entire situation is crazy, but you know what? I am 100% here for it, okay? Kelsey is basically saying what I have been saying for months now with this whole situation between her and Meg. Kelsey has been saying, you know, for the past few days that she was going to tell her side of the story. And she decided to do that after Meg the Stallion dropped that diss track on her um, last week. And when I tell you, so many people were dragging Kelsey. They were bullying that girl, going in on her. We talked about it on my live stream. So much so that her sister had to come out. And her sister, the one who came out and said, Meg, you need to calm down a bit because you're the side dish. Okay? So I had showed y'all that. And I kind of explained to y'all on that live stream what I felt happened. Because I remember Kelsey going on to quarantine radio, always being in the comment section, always supporting Tori. And then all of a sudden, Meg started showing up over there. So let me go ahead and, you know, play you guys a video of Kelsey going in. This is her explaining everything and telling her side. Y'all go ahead and check this out. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Fired, y'all. We talked about shots fired tonight, okay? Because I be getting a lot of hate. Every fucking day, I'm getting hated on. Why? I don't know. I have no fucking idea what the purpose is and all the bullshit. Megan, you steady lying on me, lying on my name. I'm not, I'm not cool with that. You know what I'm saying? You playing with my character. I ain't said shit on the internet to disrespect nobody. I haven't crossed no lines. So why y'all fucking with me? What y'all steady fucking with me for? And I have to get on the internet and do this. I have to get on the internet and do this because Last time I sent Megan a text and I told her what was the purpose of shading me. Whatever your issues is, call me or text me. I ain't get no response. So this is my only way to shoot a message to her is through the internet. Because I prefer to hash it out off of social media. You know what I'm saying? You slandering my name. You're slandering my name. You're tarnishing my character. Why? I'm a shrimp, remember? Why are you so worried? Why are you so worried about me? You stated nothing but lies in your diss track. You beefing with a fuck. You you did a diss track to somebody that ain't no fucking rapper. I'm not a rapper, and you dissing me. Megan, stop playing with me. I ain't want to have to do this, y'all. I prefer not to. I wish her well. I pray for her. I want her to elevate. But you're not going to get to where you need to go when you're steady trying to bury somebody. you steady trying to put me down. Why? Oh, wow. This is Protect black women, though. Protect black women, though. But you steady throwing shots at me. You want motherfuckers to hate me so bad, and I don't understand why. I don't know, because you still won't pick up that phone and call me. You still won't pick up that phone and call me. I will respect you more if you call me. I've expressed all my concerns to you directly. And you know what I have, what my issue is with you. I wasn't your enemy. You made me your enemy. We wasn't, we, you know, we stopped fucking with each other, but I wasn't your enemy. You made me your enemy. I have every right to get on here and address this because you made a diss track for millions of people to hear trying to humiliate me. And I'm not hurt by the comments. I'm not hurt by any of that. But when it's coming from somebody that you really know, 
That's that's the problem. And Megan, I know you. We know each other. I know you like the back of my hand. So I don't know why you playing with me. I don't know why you playing with me. Cause I can get on here and say some shit. <clears throat> the girl, I told the bitch, she said, you must want to I said, I don't understand. It's like, you, you be contradicting, like, a lot of shit. If anybody's a narcissist, it's you. And I don't want, you know, my intentions isn't to mess up nobody's image, nothing like that. I've been, I've been trying to move on with my life, actually. Only time I reply to something is when somebody sends some shit to me, some hate shit to me on purpose, intentionally. And y'all see it. Y'all see it. Y'all see it happening. <clears throat> so, let me make sure I ain't forgetting nothing. And the people around you, too. You know what I'm saying? They know what's real. Y'all know I was solid. Y'all know I was loyal to that girl. I... I would have didn't I would have did anything for her, you know what I'm saying? So, um I mean the truth is, I mean in your song, I think you said, uh, I want the niggas, I want the I don't know what the fuck. I want the niggas you got or some shit. We all know that I ain't never wanted none of your niggas. It was really come to find out, I come to find out your ass was fucking with a nigga behind my back that I was on first. And that ain't right, because you supposed to be my best, you supposed to be my best friend. We laugh at bitches that do that shit to each other. We, we not supposed to do that shit to each other. So stop playing with me. And I don't want to go back and forth on the internet. I don't want to know it. I don't, I don't care whatever you think you got on me. Expose the shit. Because there's nothing that you can expose that I won't, I won't hold myself accountable for. Accountability. You need to learn how to hold yourself accountable for shit. This shit. I don't even know why it's going this far. I don't understand to this day, y'all. Y'all ask me these questions. I don't have the answers. I don't have the fucking answers. Because people don't know how to be mature and talk like adults. Y'all can't say that I ain't trying to have no real conversation. Y'all can't say that. And really, I, I'm not the one that should have been having. Y'all should have been having conversations with me. Y'all owe me a fucking conversation. I don't owe nobody shit. I don't owe my loyalty to nobody no more. I don't owe shit. So please stop playing with me. Stop fucking playing with me because, you know, we can take it there. I want you to move on with your life. I want you to elevate. I want you to succeed. I'm not you. You're Megan Thee Stallion. I'm not you. I'm Kelsey. Let me do what I have to do to get where I need to be to make sure my family eat. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here really trying to, trying to make some shit happen. That's why you fucked with me so tough. Because I was a hustler. Because I was on my shit. I stopped what I was doing to support you. Because I, I, wanted, I wanted to do that from my heart. Anyways. If you had the right people around you, they would probably be telling you, you know, to slow down on some of the shit you're doing. It's not, it's not, it's not right. It's not. Um, if you're going to preach, protect black woman, stand on that shit. Stand on that shit. Because you and I both know. You and I both know. And I'm not here to address the incident of that. I'm, I'm talking about shots fired. You know why? Because there was multiple lies said on that shit. Directed to me, which caused a hate train on me. Anyways. I'm a, there'd be some haters on here. Girl, I'm talking to Don't worry about them. I'm already Anyways. <clears throat> Am I mad? No, I'm I'm actually yeah, I'm upset. I'm real upset. 
I'm going to read a few of y'all's comments and then I'm going to get the fuck off of here. But y'all stay tuned because I'm definitely sending my response back. I'm definitely replying. Oh, yeah. And I don't got no fucking hush money for the hundredth time. All right, so you guys just heard what Kelsey had to say. So shortly after she went online and she basically told her side of the story, which she has 100%, which she has the right to tell 100%. After that, she then dropped a diss track, okay? Now, let me say this. I didn't know Kelsey was a rapper, but I think she did pretty good. I do also feel like 1501 is somewhere in the mix. Like they made her the beat, gave her studio time, and said, go in on Mag, okay? Because as we all know, um, Kelsey and Carl Crawford, they had hung out a few weeks ago and took some pictures, and Meg was definitely in her feelings. That's probably what caused her to run to the studio and go make that diss track on Kelsey. So Kelsey dropped this diss track. When I tell you, honey, she was spilling all types of tea. Y'all go ahead and check this out real quick. Yeah, who I'm taking shots at, bitch, I'm blessing you I'm talking to that same bitch that crashed that boat, I'm 42 It's a shame we're here today, truth be told, it's cause of you Couldn't control your little feelings, look what dick is costing you It was all good, yeah, about a week ago Shout out Bobby Smarter, but this bitch is really tweaking, If I was the one with the gun, you would've heard about a murder Said her back was turned, but that girl know it really hurt her Never been a jealous friend, and the people really know it If you would've kept it solid, then I would've been told it See, I really thought I knew you, thought that you would keep it G If you wanna talk gay Bitch, I'm really from the street Imagine lying to the DA saying I took some hush money Put a muzzle on your friends, y'all acting like some crash dummies You got my chain snatch? Damn, here you go lying Yeah, a list of love, you doing too much trying Where I get this money from? Bitch, you knew I was a hustler The way she did 1501, shoulda knew I couldn't trust it. Protect black women, huh? But you still threats to me Damn, I thought that you were selling out the jokes on me Damn, I ain't wanna have to do this But you steady shooting shots Dad said if I spoke, that a sex tape could drop Was never supposed to be a gift this what y'all made it I'ma still live it up Yeah, I know y'all really hate it Fucking huh. dick behind my back Who really on their knees? You an overachiever All you do is succeed Claiming you a pimp, huh? But you slipping on your Mac And are you lying to your label? Do they really know what happened? Who shot y'all? Cause you know it wasn't me I was ten toes down Whenever you had beef It's a goddamn shame All you had to do Is clear your best friend name All you had to do Is keep it real and stay the same But you switched up on me For the money and the fame Who shot you? <laughs> you a H-Town hottie though, huh? Fuck out of here. All right, so you guys just heard what Kelsey had to say. And like I said, I think she did a pretty good job for not being a professional rapper, you know? I think that she wanted to basically get Megan... She wanted to meet Megan on her level, which was, you know, rapping instead of just ranting and raving. She took that shit to the studio and she got that shit off her chest. And I'm not mad at her. Now, two things really stuck out to me while she was rapping. One part, she says the reason why she has not spoken all this time, because remember, we've all been like, I want to hear from Kelsey. She was the only person who can, you know, basically spill the tea on what happened between Meg and Tori. We've all been asking to hear Kelsey's side. Well, Kelsey let it be known that the reason why she hasn't spoken is because Meg threatened to release a sex tape of her, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because that was supposed to be her best friend. So she was scared, but then she finally decided, like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to say what I have to say. If she wants to release the sex tape, I'm going to own it. And that's what you do. You never let a bitch think they can hold something over your head, especially when you know what it is. So I respect Kelsey for saying, you know what? Do your worst. At the end of the day, you didn't make me, nor can you break me. Okay? So on top of that, she also stated something that I had stated yesterday. And this confirmed everything I've been saying about Meg. Near the end of the song, she says, you be in everybody's face that you be talking down on. You in everybody's face that you be talking down on. Stop playing with me, bitch. Say one wrong thing, bitch. <laughs> no, I'm not one motherfucking wrong thing. I'm gonna go write some shit. <laughs> okay, so you can stop. 
So, of course, the barbs are having a field day with that one because the bar- a lot of the barbs don't fool with Meg like that ever since the whole Nikki situation. One of the bar pages, they said Kelsey Nicole seems to be alluding to Megan shading Cardi B for not writing her own raps on live with Nicki Minaj, but still making a song with her. That's exactly what I said yesterday. I told you guys that is the root of Nikki's issue with Meg the Stallion because when she was in Nikki's face, you know what I'm saying? It was all key key and, and you know, we going to diss Cardi and, you know, talk shit about her not writing. It was all this shade. And then not even a year later, you doing a song with Cardi. So I've always felt that Meg was a social climate. She's always going to use people to her advantage. And I'll show you guys proof of that in just a moment. So like I said, it's funny that I was just talking about that and people peep that. Now, after her song went viral and she was trending number two on Twitter, Meg the Stallion's friends... Meg Thee Stallion and her friends decided to respond and they responded back with laughing emojis and laughing and sticking up their middle finger. Y'all can go ahead and check this out. All right, you guys just saw what they had to say. So now um, one of Meg Thee Stallion's friends, she was taken to social media and she's basically saying, ooh, I'm trying to fight for real, for real on site. So now they're threatening Kelsey. Now they're saying that they want to fight her. Now, what I find funny is that Meg put out a whole diss track on this girl, this girl who has said nothing publicly to Meg. She put out a whole diss track on her last week and it was all good. But now that the shoe's on the other foot, all of a sudden, you know, Meg's friends, you know, she might have sent her friends to say this or maybe they said it on their own. Either way, they're saying it on behalf of Meg. So it's funny now that they want to fight Kelsey for speaking her truth. But like we say in the South, uh, a hit dog will holler. There's no reason to fight that girl. Were y'all mad when Meg made a whole diss track and went in on her and Tori as Meg had the right to do? So Kelsey has the right to do the same thing, just like Tori had the right to make his music and state his side of the story. So now this entire situation is even crazier. If you guys don't know, Nicki Minaj is watching all of this, honey. And I know she's enjoying every bit of it. And I'm going to say this, Meg better tread real carefully because as we all know, Once Nikki has her eyes set on somebody, she has an issue with them. She can hold a damn grudge, okay? Well, Nikki was seen liking a particular tweet. And I told y'all this yesterday. Um, She had posted and deleted it. But this tweet she wrote, she says, oh, so they not posting all week about child new rules. She's talking about Meg Thee Stallion's album. Because any other time, Billboard and all these other people be posting, you know, numbers. But she's saying it's funny now that nobody's really posting the numbers. But now this is what's even crazier. Somebody dug up an old tweet that Nikki had wrote back in 2013. And Nikki says, don't use my fans. I will expose your clown ass. Well, if you guys do not know, Nikki liked that tweet today. And we got the video of her liking the tweet. So that ties into what I was saying yesterday. Y'all always want to get mad at me for speaking the truth. You know, I just love how when you speak the truth, people always, you know, coin that with you hating on some shit. Whatever, honey. So to me, Nikki is confirming what I said yesterday. Meg Thee Stallion used her. She used her fan base, the Barb's, to help prop her up and give her more, you know, momentum and, you know, more of a look. That was in 2019. And then when she found something better, when she got a better opportunity, which was to work with Cardi B, who, as we all know, is Nicki Minaj's, you know, enemy, quote unquote, she jumped ship. 
And then she was Team Barty Gang. And you haven't really seen her and Nikki interact since. She didn't say congratulations when Nikki had her baby. Nikki didn't say congratulations when her album dropped. So it seems like there's been a lot of friction since then. So Nikki, like in that tweet, Meg better watch out because as we know, Nikki will take the Queen Radio with them damn guns blazing, honey. Pow, 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 pow. I don't have no damn, <laughs> I have no gun sound effects, okay? Just gotta use my damn voice. She will take the Queen Radio and air your ass out. She's done it before. Hell, when her and Cardi B got into it, she took the Queen Radio. Okay? So, she definitely has some stuff on her chest. She's definitely feeling away about Meg. And I'm sure she's here for this Kelsey diss track. Okay? So, of course, a lot of the fans were under Nicki Minaj's post, you know, commenting and stating how they felt. So, somebody named Messy Cardi said, I'm assuming this is a reference to how they posted her underwhelming album sales all week, but not Megan's album numbers. Bro, she just had a baby. Then somebody else says, I don't know how I don't know how other hotties can stand Nikki. Meg has been very nice to that lady, even when it was literally obvious she was shading her. Y'all don't really care for Meg. It's been showing all week. And then people were replying back. Um, the barbs were saying she never shaded her. And then they were arguing back and forth saying, yes, she did yesterday. Um you know, Nikki just started shading her. For the most part, Nikki has been quiet. But Nikki sees Meg for who she is, just like I've been saying from day one. When I broke down the whole situation with what happened with her in 1501 called Crawford, I brought receipts. I broke that shit down and I was attacked. I was called everything but a child of God. I'm like, her story makes no sense. She was grown. She was not underage when she signed the contract. What it is, is she feels like she got something better. So now the folks that she started with, 1501, she feels like she's too good to be with them now because Rock Nation done whispered in her ear. Because remember, she was at that Rock Nation brunch when she met Beyonce and Jay-Z, took pictures with Beyonce and Blue Ivy. And then she ran to go with them for management. But you don't tell your old team. You don't tell the man who's been putting money in your pocket, who's been basically putting you on, making sure you were good. Carl invested a lot of money into Meg. But she was thinking it was T. Ferris doing that. Y'all can go back and watch my old live streams and my old videos. I broke this down in about four different chapters. It's also on a podcast. But I broke everything down with receipts. But people still talk shit. But now people are starting to see what I've been saw. Because I'm the type of person, I'm big on loyalty. And when you can throw people away that quickly that you started with, these weren't people she just met. These are people that she started with in the industry who invested in her, who helped her out, who were there for her through, you know, when her mom passed, everything. And then as soon as she thought that she had a better opportunity, she didn't even have enough decency to tell them, look, this is what's going on. I'm thinking about leaving. You know, no conversation, just signed with them. He never saw her again, never heard from her again until she went on live and started blasting him. So now let me take y'all down memory lane because it seems like a lot of y'all have a short-term memory and y'all think I'm just pulling this out my ass when I say that she's a social climber okay because I keep receipts and dates so let's take it back to last year 2019 we see Meg Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj they're hooking up they do their song they go live together we all remember this video they had the same hair color they had the you know real cute zebra outfits so that was August 10th of 2019 then August 19th of 2019, she was hanging out with Jordan. Her and Jordan were having a good old funky time, kicking it, going live together, claiming each other as besties. Y'all go ahead and check out these receipts. She wants you to do her friend, her hair friend. friend I'm she wants you to do her hair friend. I'm performing in Houston um, September 6th. What's up? It's Megan Stallion, aka Young Tina Snow, aka the head hot girl. And um, today we're just gonna be turning up with me and my hot girl and my hot boyfriend. And we're gonna just play with four. Just do some real hot girl shit. Good. Jordan. Okay, I'm so here. What am I doing? Okay. Friend, you get you your hair done me. every single day. <laughs> and my real hair long as shit. Yeah, but I don't have Jonathan with me every single day to do my hair. Upstairs. Oh, yeah, really good. Friend, oh, you about to be turned today. <laughs> Is it good? I don't know why. I'm a curlologist. It looks really good. I'm a weaveologist. So up until then, I really didn't think too much of anything. And then I remember um, when I came back from Black YouTube, I had did a video. 
And I was talking about Meg Thee Stallion's drama with her makeup artist. And, you know, I was I kind of thought the situation was shady. But then I understand, you know, miscommunication happens. Maybe the makeup artist was in his feelings. If you guys don't know, September 28th, 2020, uh, Meg Thee Stallion's ex-makeup artist, Akil McCoy, he was very upset because um, during her during her Vogue magazine interview, um, basically, she claimed his work. And when she did that, it was over for these bitches. <laughs> my mom, like, arched my eyebrows for the first time when I was in the ninth grade. And I, like, took over. Oh, I fucked my shit up so bad. I like to kill a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and we get into it, like, every day. <laughs> Don't do it like that. Don't oh. put it like that, friend. He was like, I'm not. <laughs> and, um... She claimed his work and did not give him credit. So he took to social media and he said, you filled in your eyebrows and put on your light MAC powder when I was done. This is not makeup. This is not a makeup war. I always do your makeup and I never get credited. This is hurtful. So then after that, Meg got mad and she was like, first of all, if you was really hurt, you should have texted me. Second, you're right. It ain't a war because we all know I do makeup and you touch it up or I'll let you start and I'll finish it. So I kind of thought that was kind of her response was kind of odd because you're still trying to take claim to what this makeup artist is doing as opposed to just giving him credit. Now, she had given him credit before, but for that particular look, that was for a major magazine for Vogue. So he really wanted his credit. So when he was trying to take up for himself, she, you know, clowned him. And of course, her fans drug him, went in on him. Then she sent him a legal letter. She sent him a cease and desist where he couldn't talk about it no more. So I thought that was kind of shady, but I ignored it. Then we move on to February 3rd, 2020. If you guys don't remember, she was on video with g Easy. They were kissing and you know in bed together and you know again to me it came out very attention seeking i had talked about it back then that was doing super bowl sunday So everybody was thinking that they were together. There was all of this, you know, hoopla. People were talking. And that's when he had broken up with Hosley and she had broken up with Bunny Bag Yo. So, you know, it's causing a little bit of controversy. Like, dang, are they together? Are they not together? The Internet was in shambles. And then she came out and basically said, oh, you guys are tripping. We're not together. We're just friends. You know, y'all take stuff too seriously. Sis, you did it for attention. You're literally in bed with g Easy. And you guys are, you know, not tonguing each other down, but, you know, being very, very affectionate towards each other. So what did you think the Internet was going to think? So that right there, I was like, OK, she's she's seeking a lot of attention, whatever. Now we move on to April. OK, April 2020. This is when quarantine radio was popping. It was at its peak. And so that's when a lot of celebrities were showing up. People would be in the chat. Drake would be there. would be a lot of people going to quarantine radio. And, you know, Kelsey would be in the comments and Kelsey had popped off there a few times. Then we noticed that Meg was going there and Tori was popping up at Meg's house. Here goes a video of them together during April. Meg has just brought the Instagram live to 104,000. <laughs> Quarantine, quarantine radio. Meg, 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 we see you in incredibly sexy yellow shorts. My goodness gracious. Oh my gosh. Damn. I'm going to have some memories to do some things to tonight. Are we ready? Meg, Meg, are you joining the, uh, the official twerk competition? I am the queen of this shit. Oh! Okay. I'm virtually right, taking this. Ready? 
I'm ready. <laughs> this is a live shot. Shot o'clock, shot o'clock. To the stallion. Live in quarantine radio. So you guys see the video of them during quarantine radio, you know, having a good old funky time. And so it seems like that's around the time that Meg started messing with Tori, even though she knew that Tori and Kelsey had a thing going on. But what I feel is she was getting with Tori at that time and even giving him any type of play simply for the fact that he was popping. Because remember, everything else was shut down. There were no concerts. Uh, C-19 had just hit. So people were trying to find a way to keep their money flowing, to keep their name out there, to keep their brand going. So what better way than to go with Tori, who had one of the most popping shows on Instagram at that time? So I feel like she got with him and was sleeping with him in hopes of maybe, you know, getting a feature or, you know, maybe co-hosting something. So then we move on to March 1st. And this is when the drama went down with Carl Crawford. Megan takes to her Instagram page and she goes live and she's basically going off on 1501. She's saying that they're, that they're prohibiting her from releasing any new music and that she's going to file a lawsuit against them. And, you know, she was underage when she signed the contract. You know, everything was poor Meg. She's a victim. These, you know, these horrible labels, they're the devil and they're always trying to treat art artists wrong. Then as we got the digging, she was perfectly of age and her contract was even better than the average newcomer. Her contract was really, really good. Isaac Hayes Jr. even broke that down. So she had a really good contract for a newcomer. But the thing is, let's keep it real. It wasn't the contract. She wanted to leave and have Rock Nation do everything, do management, distribution, all of that. That's what she was trying to fight for. But she was trying to make it look like it was just the contract. And then a week later, she went on this whole hobo media tour and she was basically blasting them and throwing shade whenever she could at Carl Crawford, the same man who really helped and invested into her career. She went on to ESPN with shading him. She went on to the Breakfast Club, you know. So it was just a whole mess. And at that point, that's when I really started giving her the side eye like, OK, her character is kind of off because this is somebody who really went out their way to invest in her and who really went out their way to like, you know, who really believed in her, you know, and then for her to just kind of, you know, drop them like a hot potato because she sees something bigger and better. That kind of didn't sit well with me. So now we move on to the whole Beyonce situation. So she ends up hooking up with Beyonce and they do um, the Savage remix. And that was on April 29th, 2020, when that dropped. So that was like a huge smash. We know Beyonce jumped on there because the Savage original song was already hot. It was trending all over uh, TikTok and Twitter and on social media. So it made sense for Beyonce to jump on there. And that gave her a huge cosign. OK, so now you've been cosigned by, you know, Queen Nikki. Queen Beyonce, you know, Tory Lanez was popping at the time. So, you know, those are major cosigns. So now we fast forward to July 11th, 2020. She pops up and she's hanging out with Kylie Jenner. And so everybody was confused. It was so crazy that even the white media was talking about it and they were confused at this connection. So y'all go ahead and watch this video. We had to come kill the streets for, for five minutes. Megan the Stallion and Kylie Jenner just brought back Hot Girl Summer. Hot Girl Summer, so you know she got a lit bit. But the whole thing has fans saying, huh? I love it. The rapper and the beauty mogul hung out on Saturday and went live on Instagram rocking gold and black bikinis with rapper Tory Lanez during a little fireside pool chat. But it wasn't what they said or did that got fans' heads totally spinning. It was the fact that they were hanging out at all. So I'm excited about it. As fans were quick to point out on Twitter, the Savage rapper is friends with Jordan Woods. You know, things happen and of course I'm sorry and apologetic as much as I can be. Yeah, that Jordan Woods. The Jordan Woods who used to be besties with Kylie until they had a major falling out after that whole Tristan Thompson cheating scandal that rocked the Kardashian Jenner fam back in 2019. You know, things happen. One fan tweeted, quote, there's something about Megan the Stallion and Kylie Jenner hanging out together that doesn't sit well with my spirit. While another said, now wait a damn minute, ain't Megan and Jordan like besties? 
Savage. Last summer, the 22-year-old shared these sexy snaps on Instagram alongside the caption, real hot girl sh Having a hot girl summer just is basically about having confidence, being kind, being the life of the party, just being unapologetically you. Like, yeah. you just have to be in love with yourself. You know what I'm saying? And you yes. just have to spread that love. Okay, so we aren't sure if Jordan and Megan are still friends, but one thing's for sure. By Megan's definition, she and Kylie are definitely slaying hot girl summer. All right, so you guys see that situation. So, you know, she's hanging with Kylie. Everything's all good. And people are like, well, damn, you're supposed to be friends with Jordan. Why are you hanging with the ops? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So then... That was the night that everything went down. So that was July 11th. Then early morning on July 12th is when the shooting happened between, you know, her, Tori, and Kelsey. They were all there. Uh, Tori Lanes was arrested. Um, that whole situation was a mess. So that's what led to what happened today with Kelsey putting out that diss track um, because that was the end of their relationship. I believe that argument that nobody wants to talk about was the fact that if that argument, if, if they put that argument out there, it's going to make Meg look bad. That's why she refuses to talk about why they were arguing. Even when she did the interview with GQ magazine, she refused to say why they were arguing. Tory Lanez also refuses to say why they were arguing because it would make him look bad as well. You're fucking two friends. And you're supposed to be a friend and you've broken girl code to go fuck your besties, so-called man or side dude, whatever he was to her. They had a thing. So now we move forward to August 7th. So on August 7th, all of a sudden, here comes WAP. So that kind of confused people like, because we had been hearing rumblings that her and Cardi B were going to be working together. And a lot of people thought that was strange because, again, you were with Nicki Minaj. That was August 10th, 2019. So now a year later, August 7th, 2020, here comes the WAP video. And Kylie was also on the WAP video. And at that point, they kind of started having beef. I talked about the shade where, you know, Kylie had posted her toe and people thought that was shade towards Megan. Kylie also unfollowed her. So something obviously went down at her house that Kylie didn't feel comfortable with. So then um, after the WAP music video drops and, you know, it goes viral, they get a lot of critical acclaim, make tons of money. Then we move on to October to Cardi B's birthday party. And I talked about this like maybe a few videos ago where it came out that basically she had gotten into a fight. Um, well, not a physical fight, but she got up in EJ's face and EJ was her old stylist. She got up in EJ's face. JT from the City Girls, you know, jumped in as well. And they were trying to basically fight EJ. So that was put out there. And then on November 11th, EJ came out and he did a whole interview. And I talked about this as well. He did an interview where he spoke about it. And he talked about the whole incident that went down at Cardi B's party. And supposedly everybody was drunk. And I was talking about, you know, alcohol and spirits and, you know, things like that in that video. So now back to the whole Kylie situation. For a while, people were, you know, it was rumored that they were having beef and having issues. But then she basically confirmed it when she dropped her latest video. People spotted that Black China and Jordan Woods were both in the video. And we all know that Kylie no longer gets along with Black China or Jordan Woods. So once again, like I stated in the last video, that's another situation of Meg throwing rocks and hiding her hands. And then on November 24th, which was just the other day, was, you know, all the shade that Nicki Minaj was throwing at her after her Grammy nomination. And that's what I was breaking down in that last video that I just posted as to why there was shade being thrown. And then now today, for Thanksgiving, we have all this tea to go with your damn turkey and stuffing, okay? How you doing? So that is my breakdown of Meg and, you know, all the social climbing that she's done and just how all of this stuff is, you know, making her look crazy out here. And I believe Kelsey. I believe a lot of what Kelsey is saying. And before y'all start with this whole mess about, oh, that doesn't excuse Tori for shooting her. Nobody's talking about Tori shooting her. Nobody's excusing Tori. Those are two different situations. I'm simply talking about the drama that's going down right now between her and Kelsey. The whole shit with her and Tori, we're going to let the courts deal with that. We're going to let the courts do what they got to do. If he's found guilty, then so be it, okay? But this whole situation with Kelsey is crazy. 
you know, the fact that, you know, she was basically threatened with a sex tape and told not to say anything. But we've been saying for months, something is in the mix. Something was going on because remember, Kelsey's mom and sister, they were going off on social media. They're the ones who let it known that Kelsey went to jail behind all this mess. Meg never came out and had her back. She never came out and said that Kelsey didn't shoot her. You know, everybody keeps talking about, oh, Kelsey's wrong for this. Kelsey's acting like, you know, she's in high school. Why is it only when Kelsey comes out to talk, she's the bad guy, but Meg has been throwing shade at her from day one. From the time all this hit the news, she was talking about fake friends and, you know, unfollowing her and throwing all types of shade. She never one time said, you know, Tori shot me, but that's my homegirl. I have her back. She had nothing to do with that. But that's because that fight was a really serious fight. And like I said, when most people fall off like that, it's usually behind sex or money. So this entire situation is crazy. I don't know if I'm going to go live tomorrow because it's Thanksgiving. I'll, you know, it's going to just depend on what we're doing here. But I did want to, you know, give you all some Thanksgiving tea because I'm up anyways. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have not subscribed, make sure you hit that thumbs up, please. OK, this video took a lot to put together. A lot of receipts, a lot of research. Um and also, make sure you guys hit that notification bell so that we don't miss any of my videos. And don't forget to share the video as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. Everyone have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. And I will talk to you guys later. Deuces.